Uh, before I move on to the final item of business today, can I ask uh, those leaving the public area to do so quietly? And I will now ask um, Margaret Mitchell, it's your debate. I'm going to ask this debate motion number 1290 in the name of Margaret Mitchell on the Standing Safe campaign. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Would those members who wish to speak in the debate please press the request to speak buttons as soon as possible? And Margaret Mitchell, I'm calling you to open the debate. Seven minutes or thereabouts, please. Yeah. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I begin by welcoming to the Parliament Dr Kalia Manizaki and students from the University West of Scotland who have been involved in the launch of the Standing Safe campaign. In particular, I commend Kalia for the invaluable work she's done, which has led to the promotion of the campaign. And I pay tribute to the University West of Scotland for being prepared to raise its head above the parapet to highlight and seek to address the issue of sexual violence on university and higher education campuses. For whilst this is known to be an issue, not just within the UK, but worldwide, it's as a result of the university publicly acknowledging the problem that has led both to the issue being debated today and the recent launch of the campaign. By way of background, according to Scottish Government statistics, since rhetorics began 45 years ago in 1971, there's been a continuous upward increase in incidents of sexual violence in Scotland, including rape and sexual assault. The Sexual Offences Scotland Act was passed in 2009 in response to the worrying increase in the number of sexual offences. This legislation aims to provide a more robust legal framework in which to deal with perpetrators. So to recap, sexual violence and sexual harassment are a widespread and yet largely hidden problem, which is no respecter of persons in that victims are drawn from diverse backgrounds. And it is indeed a sobering revelation that, according to Rape Crisis, when commenting in a recent BBC report, one in seven female students experience sexual violence and or sexual assault while at university, and that 68% have experienced sexual harassment. In addition to this, these figures do not include the sexual harassment and sexual violence experienced by men. Quite simply, therefore, if it is already recognised that these incidents are prevalent within this age group and at this stage of life, then it makes absolute sense for universities and further education institutions who, whose ultimate goal is to educate to seek to address this issue with their student populations. However, at present, there is a concerning lack of specific and explicit guidelines to support and to refer student victims of sexual assault. Most UK universities also lack a clear strategy to support students to learn about and tackle the root causes of sexual violence and to understand what they can do about it. All of which brings me to the launch of the Standing Safe campaign on 14th of September at the University West of Scotland's Paisley campus, which I was delighted to participate in as the convener of the Justice Committee. This is a student-led initiative where students, aided and facilitated by staff, are working in partnership with key stakeholders such as Lanarkshire Rape Crisis and the NHS Lanarkshire Gender-Based Violence Prevention Unit. And through focus groups and student-led workshops, the aim is to tackle sexual violence and harassment on campus by crucially addressing the harmful attitudes that underpin it. These attitudes are sadly not new and are linked to rape myths and victim blaming. So the project seeks through collaborative working and by employing innovative ways of engaging with students using, for example, creative artwork to aid students' learning. The Standing Safe campaign has therefore three main aims. In the first instance, to engage students in an attempt to make them analyse and think about ways to change attitudes which can be harmful. 
Secondly, to support and teach about safe bystander intervention. And finally, to provide a practical toolkit to ensure that students know how they can access, get access to help should they require it. In order to further these aims, at the campaign launch last week, Anne Hain, manager of the NHS Lanarkshire Gender-Based Violence Unit, gave a fascinating presentation on how to help victims cope with and recover from trauma, which is a crucial factor for victims to deal with in order to move on with their lives. Here, the unit has produced an excellent award-winning video an, of an am, animated film called Trauma and the Brain. And it's a mark of the practical value of this video that Police Scotland is currently using it for training officers. Promoting this video among the student population and making it available to student counselling services represents just one of the examples of the innovative and collaborative working which is core to this campaign. So in conclusion, Deputy Presiding Officer, the University West of Scotland Standing Safe campaign represents an immensely important and groundbreaking initiative which will potentially lead to identification, early intervention and crucially the prevention of sexual violence and sexual harassment on UK campuses. It's to be hoped that by tackling harmful attitudes within the 17 to 25 age group, the instances of sexual violence can be reduced, not just for this generation, but for future generations of students as they go on to enter the world of work as adults. But this will only happen if other further education campuses adopt a similar campaign. It's a privilege to have had the opportunity to raise awareness of the campaign through today's parliamentary debate and to give my wholehearted support to this pioneering campaign. Thank you very much. And can I just welcome you to your role as Justice Convener, which I enjoyed and I'm a bit regretful I can't do it anymore. Um, I now call Christina McKelvey with the next speaker, who followed by Gordon Linter. Smith McKelvey. Uh, thank you very much, Pre Presiding Officer. And can I uh, welcome the debate to the Chamber today and uh, Margaret Mitchell's debate on it? Uh, specifically, uh, we both uh, attended the event last week. And can I pay some personal thanks to the work of Hannah Brown and the Stamp Group, the U University of the West of Scotland Students Association, and the staff that are working with them to change attitudes at university. And as a former co-convener and campaigner for the Scottish Parliament's uh, cross-party group men's violence against women the right to be confident about your own safety standing safe sounds as if it should be automatic but of course it isn't and that's why i have campaigned to get claire's law enforced in scotland and made revenge porn images a criminal offense and i have worked with a whole range of agencies both statutory and voluntary to keep on getting the message across sexual violence against women has no place in scotland at all including its universities or its colleges or its learning establishments. It is never, ever okay to use violence on someone in any context. But the reality remains that at least one in every four women in this country will encounter some sort of sexual violence in their life. There is still a stigma about being a victim, and we hear a lot about victim blaming. The underlying message, even though it is rarely stated, is that somehow it's her fault. She really wanted it. No, she did not. Not in any way did she. She took the violence because and only because she had no possibility of fighting against it. She was just as much the victim as the elderly priest who was shot in France recently. Sexual violence can be as fatal as that gunshot. And I joined the staff and the students at the University of the West of Scotland's Paisley campus last week, along with my colleague, Margaret Mitchell. And I think we learned more than we gave, to be honest, and we're very, very grateful for that. They were launching their very own Stand and Save campaign, a microcosm, a great example of how we can work together to raise awareness on the one hand, and at the same time, shift the attitudes that gender-based violence and force it out of all of our lives. It's no longer the natural consequences of a big firm match, not a joke to snicker it in the pub. If we can get to that place, then we will be seeing a real sea change. And I think there is a movement, there is a shift. 
that is kicking down the historic tolerance of sexual violence. And I think campaigns like this one are great exemplars of that change. And in this parliament, our Scottish parliament, we are setting out a concrete, visible series of measures designed to get us closer to that ultimate aim of personal safety, standing safe from any violent or sexual assault. And I'm sure across parties we will work together to ensure that is the best uh, we can do. But just last week, we were here discussing the potential for a new specific criminal offence on domestic violence. This is legislation that will help to bring justice for victims and will cover sexual violence of mental and emotional kind, coercive behaviour. And that's some of the behaviours that young people experience when they're at university, they're coerced. Then they'd think, my goodness, I can't be that victim. But they are that victim and we need to show, we need to blaze that trail. The only effective method of creating a safe environment is to use two complementary sets of tools. Local community groups working to eliminate this criminality and a clear justice system that works to enforce it. And I'm sure Margaret Mitchell will take forward that endeavour with great gusto. The Scottish Government has achieved a lot and continues to argue for more protection for victims and a more robust legal system that can deliver guilty verdicts for a very precise crime of sexual violence. And I really welcome the work of STAMP and the UWS students and their staff partners. All of us who are involved in whatever way and working towards the eradication of these heinous attacks stand together. We stand safely together. Having the right legislation in place is important, yes, and so is the kind of community action that Standing Safe is promoting. By awareness raising and peer contact, young people will be better able to protect themselves from risk. And, and those who do suffer will have better access to support and hopefully not be bystanders. I'm a realist presiding officer. I don't think that men's violence against women is suddenly going to end. But I firmly believe that we are on the right road towards making it completely, totally and unacceptable. There is no acceptable level of sexually motivated gender-based violence. And I hope we all stand safe with the students of the University of the West of Scotland. Thank you very much. Paul Gordon Lindhurst, we fall back there, Baker. Mr Lindhurst, please. Mm. Deputy Presiding Officer, the motion put forward today by my colleague Margaret Mitchell comes at a particularly relevant time as Scotland continues to suffer from a reported upward trend in sexual violence. As my colleague has already said, worryingly, the number of reported sexual assault crimes has increased, and that by 10% over the last 10 years alone including a 9% rise in the year to 2015. Reported rape and attempted rape continues to follow the same pattern, including a 5% rise over that same year. Colleagues will surely agree with me that these figures are stark and paint a picture of Scotland as a country that is failing to deal with this problem. As one of my party's spokesmen on justice issues, I want to see effective efforts made to tackle the root causes of this. Laws alone cannot do this, and I am pleased that today we will be paying tribute to a campaign that recognizes that and seeks to help address the root causes. A particularly vulnerable demographic when it comes to sexual violence is the 17 to 25 year age group, a time in a young person's life when they're finding themselves as a human being in many senses. Um, sexuality is part of this and can be greatly affected by circumstances. As these young people leave school, many of them will be leaving home for the very first time, coming into closer contact with their peers and generally with greater flexibility to do what they want without seeking parental guidance. Young people can, of course, sometimes be very impressionable, open to views, both good and bad, which can set them on different courses. Without a guiding hand, a combination of these factors can pose dangers for some. This can happen even when they've grown up with the benefit of good moral principles. What is often missing is a means through which mutuality, fairness, and respect can raise awareness amongst those who are at risk of causing others and themselves danger. Sadly, as has already been said, there continues to exist a culture of victim blaming in some parts of society that can lead to people taking the wrong path and one which they will later come to regret. At the same time, there are those who suffer sexual violence or are close to those who are the victims of sexual violence. 
such experiences can deeply affect and change lives for the worse. Again, we must ensure that there are adequate resources to help victims and indeed potential victims who, with some guidance, can avoid finding themselves in situations they cannot get out of. The Standing Safe campaign is one which is a joint effort of the staff and students of the University of the West of Scotland. In working with experienced external organisations such as Rape Crisis Lanarkshire and NHS Lanarkshire, extensive experience and ability with these issues can be brought to the campuses of the university. That experience is being used to deliver a number of different innovative projects that seek to inform the students. As my colleague Margaret Mitchell said, focus groups, workshops and social events. Let me thank all of those who have been involved in this project and also Margaret Mitchell for bringing this matter to the Scottish Parliament. As I pointed out at the beginning, sexual violence is moving in the wrong direction and we will not tackle its prevalence in society without looking at the full picture. It is the joined up approach of the Standing Safe campaign that I welcome in tackling the causes as well as the consequences of sexual violence amongst a particularly at-risk age group. I hope this framework can provide some inspiration elsewhere as well where it may be helpful in other university contexts. But at this moment, let me just again repeat my thanks to those who are involved in this project and wish them the best in their endeavours. Thank you very much. I call Claire Baker to be followed by the Minister. Ms Baker. Thank you, President Officer. I'd like to thank Margaret Mitchell for bringing this debate to Parliament and highlighting the work of the students and the campaign at the University of West of Scotland. Uh, the years spent at college and university are meant to be life-spanning, uh, stimulating and very challenging. And they are often remembered fondly as a time in your life when you had fewer responsibilities, you had good times with new friends, as well as studying and achieving goals and qualifications that will support you throughout your life. Uh, for too many women, this is not the case, and sexual violence and sexual harassment are a serious threat on campuses across Scotland. Reported crime in Scotland may be at a 40-year low, but crimes of sexual violence, of domestic abuse and of rape are on the increase, even though they are historically underreported crimes. The recent figures on the introduction of Clare's Law revealed that almost 1,000 women in Scotland felt the need to check their partner's history, and 42% of them received information about a potentially dangerous partner. This has shown the importance of transparency and is relevant to students as they are often away from their own community and familiar networks. It is difficult to accurately measure the scale of the problem of sexual violence on campus, but research that was carried out by the Telegraph newspaper suggested that a third of female students had experienced sexual assault or harassment as a student. Research also suggests that stalking is high among student populations and is often a precursor to, student, to sexual violence. Although there is a lack of recent data, an NUS study hidden marks from 2010 showed that 60% of sexual assault or stalking the perpetrator was a student and in 49% of those cases they were at the same institution. Um, sexual violence can have a devastating impact on someone. And while most cases involve a male perpetrator and a female victim, I do recognise the vulnerability of all students to sexual violence and the need to challenge threatening behaviour. Universities and colleges must tackle sexual violence. They must have clear pathways for students to raise concerns where the students can be confident that their complaints are taken seriously. And institutions mustn't shy away from strongly challenging unacceptable behaviour. The reputation of institutions is vital to their recruitment process and their international standing. And there are concerns that some cases are downplayed. This is not acceptable. And I welcome that there are positive examples of some universities in Scotland taking a very strong position on unacceptable behaviour, and these are to be welcomed. There is a need for more significant cultural change, which is difficult to achieve. But it is crucial that that happens if we are to see a reduction in these figures. Um, the rise in lad culture has led to everyday sexism often being laughed off and accepted, leaving women, often young women, who are away from home for the very first time, being verbally assaulted and sexually molested. The pattern of crime in Scotland is changing, and we have seen an increase in hate crimes and sexual crimes, and crimes which are in many ways more individual and intimate 
are on the increase and the environment of further and higher education institutions can leave women vulnerable and at risk. Proactive steps from universities and colleges to make clear that sexual assault and violence will be correctly dealt with as a criminal matter. There will be steps to support victims and steps to challenge a culture of accepting sexual harassment are all to be welcomed. Institutions have a duty to ensure a safe environment for all their students and campus campaigns have a key, key role to play in not accepting sexual violence and harassment and taking positive steps to change our culture. And although campuses have a unique set of circumstances in terms of the age profile and living arrangements of students, their behaviour does not happen in isolation. We all have a responsibility to challenge sexism and misogyny in our society, attitudes which underpin much of this behaviour and make our society safer and more equal for all our sons and daughters. Thank you, Ms Baker. I now call on Shirley Ann Somerville to close for the Government uh, Minister. Seven minutes or thereabouts. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, can I begin by welcoming Margaret Mitchell's motion and reinstating this government's full support for this and join with her in also welcoming their staff and students from the university to the chamber today. Let me say at the outset that violence against women and girls is a fundamental breach of human rights and we are committed to doing all we can to prevent and ultimately eradicate it. Sexual violence causes untold trauma to victims and survivors. And let's be clear, it's not about sex, it's about power and control. The victims of rape and sexual assault are almost always female, which does demonstrate clearly that there is an issue of gender inequality that is based upon the norms and assumptions of our society today. As Margaret Mitchell, Christina McKelvey and Gordon Lindhurst all mentioned, there is still too often focus on the victim's behaviour and of the choices they have made rather than the perpetrator's behaviour and of their choices. And we must continue to challenge these norms and assumptions because there simply is no excuse for sexual violence and perpetrators of such violence must be held fully to account for their actions. This work has to start early, earlier indeed even than university. We're working to tackle gender norms and stereotypes in schools so that children and young people can enjoy mutual respectful, responsible and confident relationships with their peers. We've published updated guidance in 2014 which encourages respect from a very early age and which supports teachers dealing with those issues in schools. And we're also supporting initiatives in schools including Rape Crisis Scotland's National Sexual Violence Prevention Programme. We are also providing additional funding to accelerate delivery of the Mentors in Violence Prevention Programme across schools in Scotland. This aims to engage more young people across secondary schools to talk about gender-based violence. Because we want young people across Scotland, no matter where they go after they finish school, to be aware of these issues, to have the opportunity to consider and challenge the thinking in a safe and an open dialogue for and for young people to be empowered to be bystanders and leaders amongst their peers and to affect genuine social change. Through this work, we want to create the conditions for those young adults entering further in higher education to have healthy respect for others and an understanding of consent. But we know there remains much to do. Rape and sexual assault reports have steadily increased year on year, as many speakers have mentioned. Now, we do believe that this is partly due to more people feeling confident of reporting. Initiatives such as Rape Crisis Glasgow support to report have made significant differences. However, one incident of sexual violence is one too many, and we must make further progress to stamp it out for good. And that's why I commend the University of the West of Scotland on the Standing Safe campaign, its strong focus on prevention and early intervention. And as I've had the pleasure of visiting university and college campuses over the last couple of weeks during the Freshers' Fairs, I've been struck once again by the importance of this campaign. Claire Baker, during her remarks, summed up nicely, I think, how students, both male and female, feel about the excitement of their new stage in life. And that must be how we see the time at university. And the Standing Safe campaign is a fine example of collaborative university-led approaches to these issues. It aligns also well with the government's equally safe strategy to prevent and eradicate all forms of violence against women and girls. Our strategy takes a gendered approach 
which recognises that systematic women's equality is at the heart of this problem and what is needed is a focus on changing attitudes and tackling inequality. And that's true on our campuses as it is elsewhere in society. Only through this will we achieve our vision of a strong and flourishing Scotland where all individuals are equally safe and respected and where women and girls live free from all forms of violence and abuse and the attitudes that help perpetrate it. Under that strategy, we are also taking action. Last year, the First Minister announced an additional £20 million over the period 2015-18 to tackle violence against women and girls and put in place better support for survivors. £1.85 million has also been allocated to Rape Crisis Scotland to enhance awareness and the support available for survivors of sexual violence across the country. In addition, we've allocated uh, just over £292,000 this year to the University of Strathclyde to develop a Violence Against Women Prevention Toolkit for the purposes of embedding equally safe in higher education institutes. The University of the West of Scotland will have much to offer in the development of this programme through their Standing Safe campaign. And the University of Strathclyde project we are funding is looking at all forms of violence against women and girls, including domestic abuse, which some young people will also be experiencing. In the recent programme for government, the First Minister confirmed that a domestic abuse bill will be introduced in this forthcoming parliamentary year, which will make Scotland one of only a handful of countries around the world that will have criminalised psychological abuse and coercive control. Creation of this new offence will bring clarity for victims so that they can see explicitly what their partner is doing or their ex-partner has done to them is wrong and can be dealt with under the law and will improve the police's ability to intervene in specific cases. Explicit acknowledgement that a psychological abuse is a criminal offence and is unacceptable aims to shape and develop society's attitudes towards what is domestic abuse. This was of course debated in the Parliament last week and I'm very pleased that it received unanimous support across the Chamber. Presiding officer, we are strengthening the law in other areas as well of course. In March, Parliament passed the Abusive Behaviour and Sexual Harm Act which once implemented will create a specific offence of sharing private intimate images without consent. The new Act also includes statutory jury directions for certain sexual offence cases and we're taking the necessary steps to enable the Act to be commenced in the first part of 2017. I will conclude by reiterating the Government's strong support for Margaret Mitchell's motion and for the work of the University of the West of Scotland and indeed everyone in the further and higher education sector who is taking action in this field. It is for all of us to play a part in creating a Scotland which is truly equally safe for all. Thank you. That concludes the debate. And I now suspend this meeting until 2 p.m.